it's been a completely challenging day that I've been kind of getting weaker physically by way of my back and nausea and sick. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so praise the Lord, this is the uh, opportunity I get though to finish the devotional, emotional today and to have God strengthen me in my inner man and to maybe go take a nap and rest and then work on posting it later. Sanctified by God the Father, sanctified in Christ Jesus, 1 Corinthians, though through sanctification of the Spirit, 1 Peter, true. Mark the union of the divine, mark the union of the three divine persons in all their gracious acts. How unwisely do those believers talk who make preferences in the persons of the Trinity, who think of Jesus as if he were the embodiment of everything lovely and gracious, while the Father they regard as severely just but destitute of kindness. Equally wrong are those who, sanct who magnify the decree of the Father and the atonement of the Son so as to deprecate the work of the Spirit. In deeds of grace, none of the persons of the Trinity act apart from the rest. They are as united in their deeds as in their essence. In their love towards the chosen, they are one, and in the actions which flow from that great central source, they are undivided. Especially notice this in the matter of sanctification. While we may without mistake speak of sanctification as the work of the Spirit, yet we must take heed that we do not view it as if the Father and the Son had no part therein. It is correct to speak of sanctification as the work of the Father, of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit. Still doth Jehovah say, let us make man in our own image after our likeness, and thus we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. See the value which God sets upon real holiness, since the three persons in the Trinity are represented as co-working to produce a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing? And you, believer, as follower of Christ, must also set a high value on holiness, upon purity of life and godliness of conversation. Value the blood of Christ as the foundation of your hope, but never speak despairingly of the work of the Spirit, which is your meekness for the inheritance of the saints in life. This day let us so live as to manifest the work of the triune of God in us. You know, there are people that actually are born again, I think. You know, I'm pretty sure they're born again, for all I know. I mean, we only know that which God tells us, and what He tells us is that He looks on the... We look on the outward things, and that looks on the heart, but there are some people that doubt the Trinity for some reason. That after having been saved, they have been, for some reason, persuaded by people to have questionable thoughts about the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And I don't have an issue with that. And to me, it's like the complete fulfilling of a design that God has had all along and I didn't see a problem in the beginning and I wouldn't see a problem later in life but I do see that people lots of times try to overthink rather than accept what God says and when they do I think they find themselves misled by their own interpretation of God than the revelation of who he is He's revealing to us who he is. We're not interpreting him to become what we think he should be. There's a big difference there. One looks upward and says, oh, well, I'm going to understand. The other says, look, I'm opening up a portion of what I am so you can see. And so, in the Trinity, the triune aspect of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, there is not a separation and designation of some type of way of saying that they operate independently of each other because they don't. They are one in what they do. They choose to be that way. They are that way. They are God. And as God, then we know that we have an assurance that even as the Father and the Son are one and the Spirit is one, so too we shall be like Him 
even as we now are separate from God, but he has said that we are becoming like him. You know, when I think about the Trinity, it's like, there are things that I think of as I pray to the Father, and then I other times pray to the Son, and sometimes I pray to the Spirit. And right now I just pray that all three would just help me. <laughs> I don't feel good. <laughs> so if you're like me, it's like, well, Lord, you know, you know. So, Father, you take care of me, and Jesus, I pray you help me. Spirit, I just ask that you would heal me in the best way that all three of you know how. <laughs> but we don't pray that way. We pray to the Father, through the Son, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so, as such, if we don't completely understand God in all that He is, it's not a surprise. We accept Him as He is, even as He accepts us as we are, and it makes us into His image. And that is the answer of the Trinity. Because the issue isn't so much one of complete comprehension as understanding the revelation of what He has shown us, and accepting that what He wants us to know He's going to tell us. <laughs> and I like that. Because what I don't know, I don't worry about. There are a lot of things I'm not worried about. <laughs> but God, I trust. And what He has shown me, I'm content with.